why the central banks in Asia, and particularly uh, the uh, People's Bank of China, uh, have been selling dollars. Uh, what do they sell dollars for? Um, Euro? No way. Um, yen? No way. Um, sterling? No. <laughs> in other words, they're selling for real money, um, which has no, no counterparty risk, and they recognize that uh, as gold. And uh, so this is why everybody thinks they're buying gold, but in fact, what they're doing is selling dollars. Gold and silver prices have soared in early U.S. trading, with gold reaching a six-week high and now surpassing $2,400. This increase follows a recent U.S. inflation report that suggests the Federal Reserve may cut interest rates sooner than anticipated. However, this trend goes beyond rising gold prices. It highlights significant concerns about the stability of global currencies, especially the U.S. dollar. As inflation fears grow and fiscal responsibility becomes a hot topic, many central banks are reassessing their currency reserves, particularly in Asia. In a recent interview with Liberty and Finance, Alastair McLeod highlights that the People's Bank of China is strategically selling off its dollar holdings and increasingly investing in gold instead of other fiat currencies like the euro or yen. A recent World Gold Council survey highlights that 29% of 70 central banks plan to buy gold in the next year, marking the highest interest since 2019. This precious metal is seen as a safe haven, free from counterparty risks, making it an appealing store of value in uncertain times. Meanwhile, Japan is also making headlines as the Bank of Japan, BOJ, begins normalizing interest rates after years of extraordinary monetary easing. The BOJ has reduced government bond purchases to keep long-term rates low. Minimal interest rate hikes may be discussed in late July, but these are not expected to affect broader economic trends significantly. Conversely, the US faces significant challenges with its substantial debt and rising interest rates, putting considerable strain on an already fragile private sector. The Federal Reserve, having raised rates aggressively to combat high inflation, aims to support the US dollar's strength. However, the pressure to maintain elevated rates is palpable, as any decision to cut them could weaken the dollar against foreign currencies. Yet, while high rates may bolster the dollar's appeal, they can also hinder borrowing, stifle economic growth, and lead to financial distress for businesses that need to be prepared for such an environment. We will present clips from Alastair McLeod's interview, but before we do, if you want more videos like this, Please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. It's not a question of gold rising, it's a question of, of fiat currencies led by the dollar falling. Um, and uh, this is really why the central banks in Asia, and particularly uh, the uh, People's Bank of China, uh, have been selling dollars. Uh, what do they sell dollars for? Um, Euro? No way. Um, yen? No way. Um, sterling? No. <laughs> In other words, they're selling for real money, um, which has no, no counterparty risk, and they recognize that uh, as gold. And uh, so this is why everybody thinks they're buying gold, but in fact, what they're doing is selling dollars. Um, the conditions that are worrying um, the People's Bank and various other particularly Asian central banks, is that they can see what's going on uh, with these Western currencies. They're fiat currencies, and uh, the governments that issue them, or their central banks, but certainly the governments that, um, uh, that, that, that are responsible for these currencies are in debt traps. As I look at it at the moment, as we're talking, it's 161.35 um, to the dollar, uh, almost a new um, low matching last week's low point um, and that is going to go lower why because um, while the J bank of japan is talking about um, you know looking at the interest rate situation and maybe raising them a little bit i mean they're not going to raise them really um, if there is any change um, in a pol in, in monetary policy they'll probably raise it by a quarter of a percent or something like that and uh, of course, there's the good old USA, um, you know, with a debt to GDP of about 130 um, percent and um, foreigners selling the dollars, as I just said, particularly the People's Bank uh, selling dollars. Um, you've got the Japanese institutions selling dollars as well.
because they've got losses on uh, their bond investments in US treasuries. Uh, so one way and another, there is a funding problem. So what does the Fed do about it? Lower interest rates? No, it's got to, it's got to keep them up because it needs the um, it needs people to um, uh, borrow yen, sell the yen, buy dollars, and pick up the carry trade. I mean, the carry trade at the moment is giving you a nice uh, sort of five five percent plus turn. Uh, and, um, you know, as long as that continues, then it defers the funding problem of the good old US of A. So you can see that um, all is not well in the world. It's all very, very distorted. Um, the idea, I mean, everybody's praying for lower interest rates because so much of the private sector is zombified. Um, without lower interest rates, government debt traps are being sprung. Um, we need to get lower interest rates. But the reality of the situation is that um, interest rates are not about um, managing the economy. They're about reflecting the loss of purchasing power of a currency. Uh, so um, that's going to continue. And at the same time, because banks are trying to de-risk their balance sheets because they're very highly leveraged, um, what they're doing is... Uh, they're raising rates against anyone who wants to borrow. Um, that is assuming that um, they, might, they can be persuaded actually to extend any credit. So um, the idea that uh, this is a time when interest rates um, should be falling and all the rest of it. I mean, I'm sure the banks hope that uh, the central banks can muscle rates down because uh, they've got um, loans out to customers who are basically zombies. And uh, they, you know, that their uh, business plans are just completely shot um, at this, these levels of interest rates because nobody expected them to come up here. But so that that uh, decay is a slow burning fuse, which means that um, uh, businesses are going to just go progressively into worse and worse financial conditions uh, with them becoming insolvent and going bankrupt. For many years, it has been widely believed that the Federal Reserve, the Fed, could cut interest rates to bail out struggling banks and corporations. Today, however, banks are anxiously holding their breath, waiting for the Fed to lower rates in hopes of salvaging their troubled bond portfolios. Alastair highlights that corporations burdened with substantial commercial loans depend on rate cuts to avoid being labeled zombie companies. Firms that can't cover their debt servicing costs with current cash flows. If these cuts don't occur, defaults could soar, turning loans into toxic debts that threaten financial stability. This precarious situation endangers the stock market and banks' loan portfolios, posing significant risks to the savings and deposits of everyday people. Central banks play a crucial role in maintaining the stability of the commercial banking system. Recent actions, like the rescue of Silicon Valley Bank, show their commitment to protecting depositors from insolvency. However, managing a widespread banking crisis could be more challenging, especially if triggered by external factors like rising bond yields in Japan or the Eurozone. Banks in these regions are highly leveraged, making them vulnerable to financial instability, which could impact the global banking network. I think we've got to make a distinction between uh bonds, equities, and uh, bank deposits, if you like. Um, bond yields are going to rise along the yield curve. And with debt traps, do not be surprised to see bond yields go way over 10%, um, which is at more than double the current level. Um, how long it will take for that to happen? I don't know. But I had experience of this in the 1970s in the UK. And it also, it was an experience of uh, which, which Americans faced too in that decade, um, particularly towards the end of the de decade. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that if you're looking at equities, they take their value from two things, the availability of credit generally, and also the cost of that credit. Now, um, the cost of the credit gives you, um, if you like, that, that sort of um, is determined uh, in investment terms very much. Um, uh, by what the bonds yield. So if you've got rising bond yields, then that is going to destroy the valuation of equities. Um, and uh, the availability of credit, that's going to be contracting as well. So one way or another, I would expect a very severe bear market in equities. 
I would not be surprised to see equities lose over 70% of their value from current levels. Um, I'm not making investment recommendations. This is just how I see things. When it comes to bank accounts, um, it is a primary responsibility of the central banks to ensure that the commercial banking system, and you'll see uh, with what's happened with Silicon Valley Bank and so on and so forth, that um, they have been rescued or deals have been arranged to ensure that deposit holders are protected from um, insolvency. That is a process which will continue. Now, it is an open question as to how that will be managed in a widespread problem. I mean, if, let us say, we imported a problem from another jurisdiction, for example, rising um, uh, bond yields in Japan, how that might um, undermine the GSIB banks, or indeed, a similar situation occurring in, uh, in, in, in the Eurozone with the Eurozone GC. US banks, incidentally, about 13 and a half times leverage. So that gives you a rough idea of the difference. The, the dangers from abroad cannot be ignored to the global banking system. Um, what we're looking at, I think, potentially is something which is far more difficult for the authorities to manage than uh, the great financial crisis which led to the Lehman failure and those moments of um, sort of thinking that the whole system is going to collapse from underneath us. This is considerably more difficult. A sustained breakout above this week's high of $2,425 is expected to continue the bullish trend in gold. If gold surpasses the $2,431 swing high from April 12th, it will likely reach the record high of $2,450. Considering the range of bullish signals in recent times, the likelihood of gold breaking above $2,431 appears strong. This potential rise signifies a robust outlook for gold, driven by prevailing economic conditions and market sentiments favoring the precious metal. Share your thoughts on Alastair's prediction in the comment section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Until next time.